Hey everyone, this is Patrick and it is time for part 2 of my top 40 albums of 2023. This has been an incredible year. Um, there has been a lot of movement on my list when I went back and revisited some of these that I haven't revisited as much as the others. And a couple of... There's going to be a December release on my list after all. For those who watched my last first reaction video, I mentioned at the beginning that I would not include December releases, but that was wrong. I have decided to include a December release because one big release that I had on my list for a while has fell, has fallen, and I listened to the album that I'm going to include on this list four times, and yeah, I am confident that it belongs in my top 40. So let's begin. Number 30 is Kostnateni with Upal. And that, I believe, translates to Kostnateni, the name of the project, translates to ossification. And Upal translates to heat death in Czech. So all of the lyrics are in Czech. This is an individual from the state of Minnesota in America. Don't know much about the project or the person or why they used Czech, but I would assume that they have heritage and they at least know the language. So this is a this is the second full length from Kostnateni, and this is out on Willow Tip Records. This is seven tracks, 38 minutes and 28 seconds of music. The name of the person is D Lyons, and they do everything on this project. This came out on May 26th. This is it definitely sounds like it's a one-person project, and I don't know exactly what I mean by that, but it just kind of has, it's so cohesive, you can tell it's one person's ideas. Uh, the sound here reminds me of Hoplite, that project based in Canada, that kind of is this dissonant style black metal. I also hear Theophanis, which I believe actually is from Minnesota too, and Carcass especially in the vocals. So the vocals are kind of like this gore grind era carcass meets Angela Gossow from Arch Enemy a little bit. This is really cool, chaotic black metal. Very interesting uh, sort of chord choices that you don't always hear. Well done guitar work. Maybe I also think of Pharmacist a little bit, at least just in the emphasis on guitar work. Kostnateni with Upal is my number 30 album of 2023. Up next, and it's one that I own, this is number 29 for me. This is Selenoplexia with Exalt and Despair. This is an independent release. They're based out of Chicago, and I picked it up from Chicago's Meteor Gem record store, which is one of my favorite record stores in the country. Selenoplexia play blackened death metal. Seven tracks, 37 minutes of music. Again, this is their debut. You have Courtney on vocals, Sawyer on bass, Daniel on guitar, and John on guitar as well. Drums, I mean, sorry. This came out October 13th. Um, yeah, this this was a grower on, for me. Uh, I'll go through a couple of the tracks. So the first track, I hear Vastum meets Belphegor. There's this cool ambient bridge that kind of turns into this tumult riff. The tracks sequence into each other in a way where you don't know when the track that you're listening to has ended and when the next track is beginning upon first few listens. So it's very interestingly sequenced. The way that Noel sequenced their album last year is a good sort of touchstone to think of. The second track is this fast down pick chug. Uh, the Bridge has this more ambient atmospheric section that reminds me of G uh, Gajira's work on Fortitude. Uh, track three is this very cool sort of combo of a very sort of noty riff and dissonant ulcerate parts that then kind of ends in this suffocation type riff. Uh, it's also... I hear Vastum in the vocal performance here by Courtney a lot too. I hear Layla from Vastum's is a lot of the touchstone for Courtney. Is it influence for Courtney? I would imagine. Track four is an instrumental. Uh, 
track five had three minutes and 25 seconds into track five there's this sort of um melodic riff that turns into this heavy breakdown i hear some gyrea in on track six and i hear on track seven this blood incantation type ambient atmosphere so if all of that sounds cool to you also some hardcore influence of course I don't know why I said of course. I said of course because I already talked about this before. But Black and Death Metal, number 29. This is a uh, Selenoplexia with Exalt and Despair, an independent release. 28 is a band that is also put out their debut this year. And I am talking about Nekis with Sepulchral Divination out on Sentient Ruin. They're from Germany. This is Death Doom. Six tracks, 51 minutes and 41 seconds of music. Doesn't get much more cavernous than this. This came out on April 7th. You have Gianna on guitars and vocals. You have the letter E on bass and you have Mark on drums. Track one, here's all that I hear. I hear Zampantli, I hear Worm, I hear Spectral Voice. Anatomia creeps in on this album as well. Creeping, crawling, funereal tempo a lot on this album. Corpsest is another band that I hear whenever they go more death metal as opposed to more doom. Track 2 is even more of a slow builder. Uh, track 3, which is named Phobos, which is the Greek god of fear and panic, is the more most aggressive and sort of anxious sounding track on this. Side C, this is a uh, 2LP. Side C uh, leaves you. Side D is actually just a, um, what's it called? There's no music on side D. But the final two tracks is what I'm trying to say. The final two tracks is open things up a bit more. There's a lot of variety on this. Uh, when you first listen, you might not hear all the variety, but there's there's a lot of variety on this Death Doom project. This is number 28 for me of the year. Nekis with Sepulchral Divination. out on sentient ruin records okay 27 is an album that fell for me but obviously i still like a lot it's in my top 40. this is torture rack with primeval onslaught out in 20 bucks spin they're from portland oregon 10 tracks 26 minutes and 22 seconds of music this is just old school death metal Band formed in 2012. This is their third album. Uh, they are a super group of a sort, at least in my eyes. This came out on June 9th, by the way. So the vocalist and bassist Jason is the bassist in Witch Vomit. Uh, Pierce, the guitarist in Torture Rack, is the drummer in Enigmatum. Tony, the lead guitarist, is the guitarist and vocalist in Witch Vomit. And then Seth C is on drums. I don't know what other projects Seth plays on, but yeah, just a who's who of, of, really of, two molds Pacific Northwest roster. At least a good chunk of them. Uh, Torture Rack. This just keeps my head banging the entire time. This is what I wanted on Death to sound like last year, which was a, dis a disappointing album for me. This just does what I want. Simple, straightforward chuggy death metal to sound like the production's great yeah just killer record it's fun to listen to uh torture rack primeval onslaught this is my twenty seven 27 album of 2023 26 is a name that might turn people off in fact it didn't attract me any but it's a great album this is snorlax with the ne necrotrophic abyss this came out on Brilliant Emperor and also Wise Blood Records. It came out on June 23. Uh, eight tracks, 28 minutes, and 28 seconds of music. This project started in 2017. It is a one-person project. The name is Brendan Ald. He does everything on here from Australia. Blackened. Death metal, death grind, I hear Gyrea, Gore Guts, Alterage, Artificial Brain. The vocals remind me of Dylan, A Full of Hell. Uh, some of the pacing 
it's not as death grind as I, you know, I first kind of categorized this out, this project as death grind, but it's 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 more black and death metal. The pacing uh, is definitely mid tempo a lot more than most death grind albums. Uh, the pacing of anti inferno comes to mind. There's Belphegor style riffing on track three and track five. Comes in eight tracks, twenty eight minutes, leaves you, and if it, you feel satisfied, um, yeah, surprise hit for me. Just I immediately knew I was gonna like this as soon as I hit play. After after track one, I was like, this is this is great. It kind of it moved around, but um, it's staying in my top forty. It is Snorlax at number twenty six for me of my top LPs of twenty twenty three. Now, 25 is my December release. This, uh, I was excited about as soon as I heard this album. This is a project that I like a lot. I'm talking about Phobocosm with Four Ordained. This came out on Dark Descent Records on December 8th. Six tracks, 41 minutes, and 12 seconds of music. This is a band from Montreal. They formed in 2008. And this is their third LP. And in fact, it is the third part of a trilogy. Um, cover art is by Lori Laxinen, who's, who's also does cover for bands like Desolate, for the band Desolate Shrine. We have Etienne on vocals and bass, Samuel on guitar, Rob on guitar, and Jean Sebastian on drums. The drums on this are killer. So Phobocosm give you death metal meets death doom. The vocals sound like Ross Dolan of Immolation. The music sounds like Ulcerate, and that is a perfect combination for me. This is their most aggressive and heaviest of the three albums so far, which is saying a lot if you know their first two. More blast beats. The production is a bit less murky. The vocals sit a bit higher in the mix. You can understand what Etienne is singing, is screaming, is emoting about. And that is the apocalypse. All three of the albums cover different um, realities. The second album was about climate change. Foreordained is about um, just, I mean, the sun is going to eventually, you know, implode on itself four to five to six billion years from now, according to cosmologists. So everything eventually meets its foreordained fate. Yeah, I like this album a lot. Um, it deserves a spot on my top 25. Uh, it's top 40, but yes, number 25, Phobocosm with Four Ordained. All right. So 24 is exciting because this this was in my runners-up for a while, and then I revisited it, and I'm like, I love this album so much. So I am talking about Body Void with Atrocity Machine. This came out on Prosthetic Records. They formed in 2016. This is their fourth LP. The names of those songs should tell you that you're getting some bleak, bleak content here. This is Sludge Doom Drone music. Uh, you get Will O'Ryan on guitars and vocals and electronics. You get Edward on drums, and you get Janice Aaron on noise and electronics. So they brought in more noise, more electronics. It sounds more industrial than their previous album, which is just, just has less of those electronics parts on it. Very heavy. Dissonant. It's like if Amon Ra, instead of Amon Ra, instead of bringing catharsis like Amon Ra does, even though it's bleak, there's no catharsis here. This is just the sounds representing the atrocity machine that is capitalism, according to Body Void. So, yeah, Body Void is one of the heaviest bands on the planet, and I love that. I like this album a lot. Yeah, it kept rising every time I went back to it, and yeah, this is an awesome release. Body Void sits firmly at spot 24 for me. 23. Let me double check where I am. Everybody has to do this, don't we? 24. Okay. Up next is a 
sort of a band that it didn't come out of nowhere for me but I struggle liking war metal there's been a bunch of other war metal type releases bestial black and death metal whatever you want to call it coming out this year and most of them didn't I didn't enjoy this one memorable this is Ruin Lust with Dissimulant. They started in 2011. This is their fourth LP, out on 20 bucks spent on September 29th. They're from New York. Eight tracks, 31 minutes, and eight seconds of music. And again, genre is black and death metal, war metal. For fans of Ascended Dead, Full of Hell, Grave Sin, Authorage, and Imprecation. You get blast beats, you get churning... Riffs, that's what makes you think of imprecation or corpse cest. You get this war marching drums that really make it war metal to me. You get some cannibal corpse like lead and solos, especially on track three in particular I'm thinking of. I love the great rhythm change ups all throughout this album, but especially represented on track four. Track six is when you get the first reprieve, but it's an anxious reprieve, but it's it's quieter for not very long, but at least a good minute and a half, I would say, that then picks back up. Yeah, just just a very entertaining, engaging listen. Ruin Lust Dissimulant for me. Yes, so a fan. Ruin Lust is my 23rd favorite release, favorite LP of 2023. 22 is an album that came out quite early in the year. I remember reviewing it in my first reactions, or I think I might have missed it in a first reaction, but I gave it my album of the month when it came out, which I believe was March. Thy Dark and Shade with Liberate Lucifer 2, Maha Pralaya. Pralaya. This band started in 1999. This is black metal from Athens, Greece. This is nine tracks and an hour-long record. This came out on World terror committee productions this is their third lp maybe my favorite drum performance of the year sort of altar meets horrendous i hear some marduk i hear behemoth i hear mala carpetan there's a session drummer on this hannah grossman you kick ass so much i'm actually not familiar with the first part of this um series maybe it'll only be two maybe it'll be three who knows but this is the first album i've heard from this band i haven't gone back yet let me know in the comments if they i know some friends who don't like this one as much as the previous liber lucifer album this is the one i know it stayed on my list this entire year it has fallen a little bit but i love this album die dark and shade liber lucifer 2 this is my 20 second album of 2023 and finally and this one also every time i revisited it it just kept growing and growing and i it had to make my top 40 albums of the year so this is spectral damnation with extra ecclesium out on neck neck twister records never heard of that label at all this is the first LP, but they've been around since 2015. They're from Belgium. This is atmospheric black metal. 10 tracks, 48 seconds of music. You get Gaten on vocals. You get Arachnid and Zaboth on guitars. You get Archon on bass and Ahafame on drums. So the name of the album means Outside the Church. Um... And it can be loosely translated as outside of the church, there is no there is no salvation. Uh, this it has some killer riffing, um, AFSCII style riffing, uh, dissection type atmosphere, uh, Marduk type blasting, slight behemoth vibes, Gyrea atmosphere as well. The drum sound analog. Uh, Meaning they don't sound, you know, punched in very much. The production is great. Uh, it's not very clean, but it's great. It's great for what it's supposed to be. Love this album. Uh, it kept rising on my, my list. If you like atmospheric black metal. So 
I definitely they were I was reading an interview and they 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 are seen as black and death metal but I mostly hear black metal until the final two tracks um, and track nine relics ostension ritual also I hear some more orchestral parts maybe done with synth I'm not sure and the final track, I definitely hear a bit more death metal, so you can call it atmospheric black and death metal, but I would think it's the core of it for me is that this is a black metal listen. Spectral Damnation, Extral Ecclesium, number 30, sorry, number 21 of my top 40 albums of 2023. This is fun. Uh, I have been enjoying people who have been posting their list already on YouTube. Uh, if you have a favorite favorite top 40 or 30 or 10 or just give me your favorite album of the year, if you don't have a channel, post it in the comment section. I really would enjoy going through your favorites as well. Thank you for watching. It, it is much appreciated and I will catch you all very soon. But remember to stay heavy.